a provision is a liability of uncertain timing or amount a constructive obligation is an obligation now that is a first of all it's an obligation salary can also become a contingent liability why because provisions are contingent because of the uncertainty factor that we are talking about Good morning and welcome to this very very important session that is on session 3 of unit 3 in IFRS where we are going to speak about the borrowing cost provisions contingent assets and liabilities so this is going to be a very very important session where we are going to learn about the contingent assets and the liability factor so let's going forward let's try to understand what is the objective behind this the objective of this standard is to ensure that appropriate recognition and criteria measurement basis are applied to the provisions to the liabilities the contingent assets the sufficient information is disclosed in the notes to enable users to understand the nature which means to say that whenever we talk about this contingent liabilities and assets it has to be disclosed clearly telling to the people what are the factors what are the features that are enabled here suppose there are some factors there are some changes there are some methodological things that has to be brought through the notice of the investor it has to be done at the earliest so that's why i would say that sufficient information has to be provided every time to the users to the account holders so that they come to know what is exactly happening inside the company now what is the definition here a provision is a liability of uncertain timing or amount now moment you say that you are going to keep a provision according to accounting which means to say that you are going to keep an uncertain amount as a factor which is going to meet the future liability so there might be a time there might be a condition where you do not know what to do with that so that is why you are getting that uncertain timing factor here which is very very important for you in terms of moving forward so that amount that timing is not known to you so that's why you are keeping a provisional factor there followed by a liability is a present obligation now when i say that i have a liability that means currently i'm having it i am having an outstanding loan which means to say that right now the loan is present the right now i have to manage my emi so that's where this becomes an obligation of the entity arising from past events the settlement of which is expected to result in an outflow of entity resources which are embodying the economic benefits now this is very very important now what is this trying to say here is that at any given point of time at any given uh, resource altogether what is coming into picture this is getting into an obligatory mode this is getting into an obligatory function or together so what is expected here is that at any given point of time this is an obligation from the company that this outflow has to be met within that given time span followed by an obligating event is an event that creates a legal or a constructive obligation that results in an entity having no realistic alternative settlement that means to say that moment when i say there is an obligatory function coming into picture from the lines of accounting that means to say that there is a legal binding behind it and if you are not able to understand the legal binding and go forward altogether then automatically that is going to create a sort of problem that is not it's not going to be that easy if you are not following that legal obligation on the other hand you have to follow the legal obligation that derives from contract through which which is explicit or implicit so for example if the company has got into a loan and it's been explicitly mentioned from the party that every month by fifth you have to settle down the emi amount then automatically that becomes an obligation for the company to repay back the loans altogether 
Moving forward, we are now going to talk about the contingent liability and the contingent asset. A constructive obligation is an obligation. Now that is a first of all, it's an obligation that derives from entities action where it is established by a pattern of past practice. Now whatever you have done in the past. That is, the company might have borrowed, the company might have carried forward in terms of understanding, in terms of constructive practice, publish the policies or a sufficient specific current standard. Now, that also becomes very, very important because at the current level, what it is happening, the entity has indicated to other parties that it will accept the responsibilities. Yes, the company goes forward and tells that at any given point of time, I have got sufficiently understood to the factor that I am also indicating that I will take the moral responsibility of paying back the contingent. Now, as a result, the entity has created a valid expectation moment you go forward and you promise to the other party that I will be making the payment on this particular fixed day automatically you are creating an expectation from your side stating that you will be in a position to go forward and pay back the payment on time. So a possible obligation that arises from past events and whose existence will be confirmed only by the occurrence and non-occurrence. Now that is very very important. Occurrence and non-occurrence of one or more uncertain features or events not wholly within the control of the entity. Now that becomes very very important. Why? Because if you guys are able to understand the past and the present factor. And this is why because I will always like to tell you. If you guys are able to understand the past and the present factor, you are able to see that at any given point of time, your past performance and with your present performance. So similarly for the entity, that will tell you what is the control, that tell you what is the performance level altogether. And at the present, if the obligation again arises from the past even and it is not recognized because it is probable that the outflow of resources at the economic benefits required to settle the obligations are not matching one level and it cannot be measured with the sufficient reliability. Now a contingent asset is a possible asset that arises from the past events not from the present event it arises only from the past event and that will be confirmed only by the occurrence or non-occurrence. Now let me try to bring you some examples here why because in case, what, are, what do I mean by a contingent asset? An asset which is being kept to solve a provision. So the last time, let's say that you had kept an asset like a land or building for a contingent purpose or a machinery for a contingent purpose saying that using this asset, let's say gold itself is a contingent asset by which you are going to pledge and take out some money or you are going to keep something as a reserve, as a backup and take out money. That is because you feel that at any given point of time, this particular event can occur again or can go back in nature to you. So that is why you are bringing this contingent factor altogether in picture. So what do we mean here when I say that the liability in a set contingent liability might occur because there is a factor that you know you might go again into debt, you might go into that factors of taking that money. Now contingent liability where you know uh, you are trying to see here very very clearly that it is bound to happen and that is happening because of the entity's past performance and the present performance altogether. Now moving forward the provisions and other liabilities what are the provisions? Provisions can be distinguished from other liabilities such as trade payables and accruals because there is uncertainty about the timing or amount of the future expenditure required in this settlement. So that becomes very very important here. So by nature what we are trying to say is that by the contrasting factors altogether. If you are looking at the trade payables that is payable for the goods or services that have been received or supplied or has been invoiced altogether or formally agreed with the supplier then the accruals are liabilities to pay the goods and services that has been received but we have not been paid or invoiced. So that is where we are trying to make it understand in terms of 
the factors that are related to it. Now, by contrast, let's say that the trade payables are also liability because you have to pay them for the goods or services that has been received or supplied. But if it has been invoiced properly, now accruals are also liabilities because you have accrued that money and you have to pay it back. You have to be received or supplied has not been paid back at point of time. Similarly, you can also see that salary can also become a contingent liability. Why? Because you have to pay back the salary on a particular due course of time. And if you are not able to pay back at that point of time, the salary can also become a liability here. So that is why what we try to see here is the uncertainty factor. Now the accruals itself comes under this uncertainty factor, which is generally more or less much equal to that of a provision. Accruals are often reported as a part of trade and other payables, whereas provisions are reported separately. That's the only difference that you need to understand. Accrual is something that will happen more from a transaction perspective. When we are talking about trade, when we are talking about services, when we are talking about the payables part, yes, there is an accrual because today I might have accumulated, tomorrow I will pay back, today I might have got, gathered something, tomorrow I will pay it back. So there are factoring that is going to come in terms of understanding the accruals and the payment. But then on a provision, it's been exclusively kept for that event when it's going to happen. Moving forward, let me talk about the relationship between the provisions and contingent liability. In general standard, what happens? Provisions are contingent because of the uncertainty factor that we are talking about. However, with this standard, the term contingent is used for liabilities and assets and not recognized because of their existence will be confirmed only during the occurrence. Now, that is very, very important and one or more uncertain future events which are not wholly understood within the control of the entity in long term in the general contingent liability do not meet the recognition criteria that's very very important why because from an entity standpoint from an organization standpoint we are dealing with something called as the time factor and this time factor is going to deal with something called as uncertainty of the future so when we are talking about these two things there's a whole lot of gap that comes in between now that is trying to tell us that there is some distinguishing factor that comes into picture so when you are not able to distinguish a factor very, very clearly, you are not able to see that unforeseen factor, the uncertainty factor in terms of accounting. So you will not be able to sit here and predict that in 2025, there is going to be a tsunami coming or a disaster coming into the picture. You will not be able to foresee a loss 10 years before itself. So what happens is that a contingent liability cannot be recognized at any point of time unless and until when it comes into the real picture, when it comes into the real action altogether. So that's why the standard will distinguish between provision recognized as liability. So when you recognize something as per the accounting standard and you clearly mention it and say that this is a liability, then automatically I accept it because they are present obligation and it's probable that an outflow of resources embodying the economic benefits will be required to settle the obligation. So you understand. Yes, this is the obligation. I need to settle it, which are not recognized. Now, there are some times and the second part contingent liabilities, which will not be recognized because at that point of time, only when the outflow of resources happen from the organization, there will be an contingent liability that will be created. So when I use that word standard, standard is something which is happening on a regular basis, but a contingent is something that will happen only on an eventual basis followed by a recognition of provision. Now, section 14a, the provision 14a 
says that it will be recognized only when the entity has a present obligation. So very, very important. I say that it has a present obligation as a result of past event because of something happened before. Today, I am having a present obligation. It is probable that an outflow of resources because of the embodying of economic and benefits that will require to settle the obligation as it has been told. Reliable estimate can be made to the amount of obligation if the conditions are not met or the provisions will not be recognized. So only when the entity has got a present obligation as a result of past event, it is probable for the outflow of resources embodying the economic benefits, then this will come into picture and it will be started taking into account. Followed by obligations. Now the obligation terminology itself is something which involves another party to whom the obligation is owned. As a company, when I borrow money from the bank, the other party is obligated towards me or you know, I become obligated towards the bank in terms of repayment of the loan and the bank gets obligated to me in terms of collecting the money from me. So. I the bank is where the money is owed and the company is a person who has borrowed the money. It is not necessary however to know the identification of the party. Now company does not have to go to that extent telling the customer that sir I borrowed only money from this branch of this bank. That has not to be mentioned every time but then it is actually the obligation might be known to the public at large. Public might definitely know that this is where the money has been borrowed from. Because an obligation, because a commitment comes into picture, this does not give rise to any sort of problems but then obligation will definitely tell you the reporting period under which it has to be mentioned it has to be taken forward and it has to be made the payment on that so as long as the company is able to discharge its liabilities discharges uh, you know factors of repayment very very clearly then we don't have to worry about it at all it becomes a very very natural source natural course of action altogether in terms of solving the entity related issue so obligation is something like a commitment on which you go forward and you tell the people clearly that yes we have been doing this business and this is where we have borrowed so we will be paying back on time followed by the obligations also an event that does not give rise to an obligation immediately so or a later date because of the changes in law or because of that for example a sufficiently specific public statement so what the company says that it is not currently we are due but we might be due in the future course of time in future course of action there we are giving this so when an entity gives rise to a constructive obligation that does not actually hamper into the accounting standards of the company only when the entity decides that the obligation is something mandatory in purpose to go forward and let know the company altogether, let know the public altogether, then the obligations comes into picture. So when a law existing regarding the damage, regarding the existing factors, regarding the responsibilities and other course of action comes into picture, that is where the obligation becomes notified to the public. Contingent assets. Now, when we talk about contingent asset, an entity shall not recognize a contingent asset. It is actually gives rise to unplanned factor. When, for example, any unplanned or unexpected events to give rise to the possibility of economic benefits arising from it. For example, a claim that is pursuing through legal process. Now, a company has got a court case that has been going against it. Now, the company expect that they will win the court case and they will get something in return in benefit from them then I'm going to call it as a contingent asset altogether. Now that realization of the amount and once the case has been won, when they realize the entire factor and when they get it back, then we are going to call it as contingent asset. Contingent asset will be disclosed only when it is required and it has been recognized altogether. So this becomes very, very important for all of us that contingent asset will be recognized only at the due course of of time and not before it. So that's why I say that 
contingent assets are assessed continuously to ensure the developments appropriately then we will take the time we will go back to the public and say that yes whatever we have told in the statement is now being realized by the company if it is not being done there is no need there is no specificity about going back and talking on the same in terms of reporting with that i come to the end of this session i hope and believe that all the information provided in this particular session was of great help and resource to you in the upcoming sessions we will be talking about the equity statement and the changes as per the ifrs until then stay tuned stay blessed and stay enlightened forever Thank you once again for joining me today on this wonderful session.